brook trout are often considered the jewels of the north, and for good reason. Here in Northern Ontario, there are many places to land a trophy. So Adam has us casting, we've got a sink tip on a way forward line, might have had a bite there, <laughs> uh, on a way forward line here. And what's interesting is that the wind is coming from my right. And so in order to make a really good cast with a heavier fly, we've got a dumbbell weighted fly, purple, pink and black flash. What's happening is that the wind is gusting and we want to duck because it's coming very close to our face. And so you want to do a sweeping sidearm oval cast to be able to get that fly away from you and hopefully where you need to be. <laughs> Fish. There, fish! Woo! Gorgeous. Okay, looks like a good... Good job, Alex. So this brookie ended up hitting really, really close to us. So I was about to, and what a lot of anglers can do, oh, let it run. You want to let it run when it pulls like that. Make sure that you let a little bit of line out if you don't take it to the reel. But what's happened is that I could have gone ahead and picked up my fly to cast, but what a lot of anglers need to do is remember that you want to uh, oh, let it run. <laughs> this is a good fish. You got fish. a five weight, right? This is a good it's fish, it's a little five, five weight. weight. Yeah. It's a good fish, it's fighting really, really good. So you want to make sure that you let it sit for as long as possible because the fish could be sitting right in front of you. So, oh, this looks like a good one. All right. Good call with the move. Ooh. Fish. This could be my PB rookie. Yeah. I might cry. Welcome to Algoma. Welcome to Algoma. This is Adam Valley, <laughs> my favorite guide. Ooh, oh, that's a good beautiful fish. Beautiful fish too. That's a good fish. Yeah, nice colors. Where is it? No, nope. lost it. Here it goes. Woo! <laughs> nice job. That is my baby brookie. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful wow. fish. Beautiful fish. Look at this. What an incredible... Beautiful natural fish. Wow! Nice job, Look Alex. at the beautiful halos of blue still colored up a little bit. Oh, this is a beautiful colored up fish still, right? So it's got unbelievable red speckles with blue halos around them. Just looking absolutely lovely. You can really tell the white line and the red fin. This is a, this is a gorgeous Algoma fish. I can't even, I Welcome. can't even handle it. Welcome. Thank you! And you didn't even have good conditions <laughs> today, so... I'm very excited. Great job. Beautiful. It's got a purple clouser, nice and purple, black and pink. Just unbelievable. Did you see that? <laughs> so what I'm doing is I've got these stone flies that are surface flies and I'm laying them out about 45 degrees across the river and I'm wiggling to my rod tip so that it has a, a scared skating motion on the surface. And these brook trout are coming out of the sides of these rivers, these river banks and just haven't, having at it. They do not like it at all. It's another good one, Keith. So it's important to keep lots of action on that, on that stone fly so that it looks like it's actually fleeing the, the area where these brookies are living. Great. Thank you, sir. So that's a fly I'm using. It's a, uh, it's a golden stone fly. It's got legs made out of foam and a, uh, a brown hackle around the hook and it keeps afloat just by a couple of strips of dark brown foam and it's uh it's putting a clinic on them today let's take a look at this brook trout 
Hey Keith, you wanna come and grab the net for me? Thank you. Now we're in the middle of July right now and uh, the water on the freestone has stayed really nice and cool due to the cold weather up here. And that has allowed these fish to stay super active. And that is a great female brook trout. You wonder why they call them square tails? Look at that, absolutely perfect. <laughs> She's full of, you know, that's a good sign of how cold the water is, is, you know, after a, a battle on fly, they're still ready to take off. And Equipment for Ontario brews or brook trout is as follows. Five to seven weight fly rods with appropriately sized matching reels. For most of your fishing, floating weight forward lines matched to your fly rod are ideal. If fishing large rivers or lakes, we recommend you bring intermediate fly lines and also sink tip lines to get your lines down in the water column. Northern Ontario brook trout can get very big, so be prepared by bringing good quality leaders and tippet. Generally, 9 to 10 foot leaders are best along with 2x to 4x tippet material. The flies we recommend bringing for Northern Ontario brook trout fishing are a mix of older proven patterns and unique new offerings. For dry flies, Parachute Adams should always be in your box, along with Elk Hair Caddis, Stimulators, and Goddard Caddis. For subsurface flies, Woolly Buggers are always a deadly offering for brook trout. Patterns such as the Beaver and Tan, Gold Buggers, Olive, and of course Black are effective throughout Ontario. Streamers such as White Zonkers, Muddler Minnows, and Murdich Minnows combined with sinking lines are strongly recommended. When you can move brook trout to surface strikes, Mice patterns such as the Moorish Mouse works well, as does gurglers in fast water. In Algoma country, which is central northern Ontario, there is excellent brook trout fishing in streams, rivers, and small lakes. I had the opportunity to fish some small lakes and ponds with a guide from Airedale Lodge. I just started thinking too, eh? <laughs> second guy, second fish. Oh, are you, are you gone? No, you still got him. Hee hee. Oh, that's a better fish, too. So, you know what? It pays to put in a little effort for adventure when you're here at Airedale Lodge. Okay, now, so when you're fishing from a canoe and you've got close quarter combat, with brook trout or any fish for that matter, always keep in mind that the tip of your rod is where the most stress is on your rod. Generally with bigger fish, you like to fight them with the butt of your rod. But to get these fish in close, you need to fight them off the tip. And that's where you can get into some serious trouble, especially in a remote location where you might actually break a tip. So what I like to do is bring them in as close as you can without as much stress on your tip as possible and grab the leader and then let go of your line in your real hand. So just like that. Now all the stress is off the tip of the rod. I can place the rod behind me where it's safe and then properly hand, hand line this fish. Second cast, second fish. Very decent brook trip. Tons of fun. All right, let's get him unbuttoned, and then we'll let him go. Bye, buddy. Where he goes. 